so recently, um, Double Fine, I can't even remember the name of the game. They, they, they had that Double Fine Adventure Kickstarter that raised like $14 billion. <laughs> $14 billion. Uh, roughly. Wow. That's a great Kickstarter. Yeah. Let me call them up. I want to find, no, never mind. Just kidding. But yeah, so they, so they came out recently and it's, it's delayed. Yeah. Um, and it seems like most people who gave money are like, okay, that's fine. And they're, and they're going out about a different way of getting the money for it. They're going to be a beta for it on, on Steam, basically. So if, if the same, and this is like the thing that happens with every game, basically. But if the same thing happens to Shadow of the Eternals, do you think that you have the goodwill in the community that people be like, yeah, we, we don't mind waiting another year, we trust that this will come out? Or do you think just like, whether it's true or not, the Kotaku article or anything else will like, hurt your ability to be able to be truthful with fans when, when you need more time or you need more money. Well, certainly I'll say this wholeheartedly. The Kotaku article will have nothing to do with me ever being truthful. And yeah. Truthful, period. And, and you know, um, the I can say that easily. The, <laughs> um, but um, I think if I understand the story correctly, and I don't know all the details, so please give me some leeway here. But at the end of the day, um, uh, I think if we're honest and transparent with our fans, if we do run into hitches, that uh, we will uh, be able to uh, get through it. Um, okay. But I feel I feel very confident that uh, you know we'll be able to hit our goals and hit our deadlines. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope so. So uh, in the last few years, probably like five years, indie games have kind of taken over the world, especially if you hmm. ask me. Okay. Um, cool. And what that means is um, publishers are kind of not that important anymore. They do drive the conversation a lot because they spend the most, most money, but as far as like, the real innovation is going on with the indie scene. Yeah. So, I mean, you've worked, I think this is your first game, Shadow of the Eternals, your first publisher-free game. That's right. Uh, you worked with Nintendo, you worked with Konami, you worked with, with some of the heavyweights, Activision, I think they're the biggest yeah. in the world. Yeah. Like, what is the best thing about not working with a publisher? Um, uh, I think, I think it, uh, I would say, Flexibility in being able to um, um, be really able to take community input like never before, and really be adaptive and uh, really uh, take and go things in the direction that we want to go. And to be clear, uh, at times publisher feedback is incredibly good, and incredibly helpful, and it's always good to have that third eye. So, um, but. At the same time, we can be more adaptive and and see a change wind and not have to worry about what the contract says, um, where uh, you've got all these milestones upcoming, where we can, you know, if we have an issue we think is a, a monumental change, we can bring it up to the community, see what they think, mm -hmm. and if everyone's in favor, we can go in a new direction. Okay. So I think that gives some quite big advantages. Okay, I guess on the other side, um like, I'll bring up my favorite developer ever, Rare. Mm. Uh, they had Nintendo over them, and Nintendo was able to rein them in, basically, and keep them focused on actually releasing games. And then they go to Microsoft, and they don't have that structure, and all of a sudden, they can't get a game out the door, basically, and they've kind of dissolved. So for you, now that you're on your own completely, uh, what is the biggest weakness of not having that incredibly wealthy big brother looking over uh, your shoulder all the time? Well, uh, so to be... I don't know if that happened with Rare. I don't know the circumstances, to be yeah. fair. So I don't know, I don't know what happened there, or the details, or um, how much Nintendo looked over them, or anything like that. So, um, but I will say, um, when we made our first game, we did it entirely back at Silicon Knights, and when I made my first game, I should say, Cyber Empires, we had no one overseeing us. Okay. Um, we just made it on our own, and it was, um, it was, you know. I think Computer Gaming World gave it Multiplayer Game of the Year before Multiplayer was out. It was a hot seat. <laughs> it was kind of like uh, the Total War series is right now, played on an Amiga and an Atari. So um, I think it's um, I think there's a lot of possibilities. But at the same time, you know, we've learned a lot and we've got a lot of experience. We're going to make sure that we hit that. And then Sean, that's Sean's job to make sure we don't miss deadlines and schedules. So you know, time will tell. But I feel pretty good about it. Like you don't have that fear of. of no. I mean, just, I mean, what was it, I mean, because what was it like with Nintendo? Was Nintendo was really did they were they hands on at all with Silicon Knights? Did you feel like you learned a lot from them? Absolutely, and yeah, they were absolutely They're hands on. Hands on with Eternal Darkness, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and they were hands on, but uh, they were great. They tried and had and and um, put a lot of serious effort into the game. Um, in some ways, they were really let us go in the direction we wanted to go too. So. Uh, they really were happy, and we created like the story and all those. A lot of that stuff was just basically done, you know, 
at Silicon Knights. So it's sort of, um, I think people's perception of what happens versus reality is very, very different. And I'm not really, you should never, and you can't really talk about the details of that because you have all these agreements that you won't, but yeah. I will say that they're a great partner. Um, and uh, reigning, I think the whole perception of reigning people in with Nintendo is uh, not the most accurate. I think they're a great partner, but I, 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 I don't know how much they ever reigned us in, and I certainly have no idea how much they were raring. Okay. If that makes any sense. Uh, so right now, um, hopefully, if there's enough funding, you're gonna make Shadow of the Eternals for three different systems. Yeah, uh, if we... It's if PC, we, PS4, and Wii U. If our first stretch goal is gonna be PS4. So the surprise in that list is, of course, Wii U, because nobody likes the Wii U. Everybody hates it, right? We like the Wii U. Why, what is it that drew you to the Wii U, and why is this, why is this system... Like, is, is, there, is there room for your kind of game on there? And why is it not found any kind of audience at this point? I don't know if that's true either. That there's no I don't, audience? Yes, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if that's true. I it's, certainly... Well, it's struggling at retail, which is a real shame because it actually is a good system. But it's... Yeah, it's I don't know system. if it's a marketing thing or people don't like the system. But, I mean, what is it that drew you and said, we should make this game for the Wii U? Um, well, um, I think, you know, first of all, we're great friends with Nintendo. We love yeah. Nintendo. Um, also, um, you know... Eternal Darkness uh, got its roots with Nintendo, and I think uh, spiritual successors should follow those roots. And um, I think that's that was just natural. Um, I also think that the controller and, our, or I should say, the system itself is very, very unique and works. It really it leaves a lot of possibilities for sanity. So. Okay. Yeah, we've we've seen some people come out, and even Nintendo has struggled to make anything with that controller, as far as using two screens in conjunction. Uh -huh. It's sometimes a map. It's sometimes yeah. Nothing at all. Uh, the, I mean, the best thing is that you can play games on there. Mm -hmm. So what is, I mean, what is it that drew you to that? Like, what kind of insanity effects are you going to do? Or what kind of... Well, that would be spoiling everything. Yeah, like I guess that's, that's true. I you, mean, don't, you, that's, don't want, you don't want to spill the beans, which I'm, I'm so good at Because it's going to have to be a completely... I mean, it's going to have to be a different version, basically, from the PS4 and the PC version, because you have this different... Well, the, the interesting thing is the Crytek engine does run on all of them. Yeah. Um, so maybe there'll be... Um, some differences between them, but at the at the at the end of the day, we want to make them as similar as possible. And we also, as far as you know, certain things go. But then we also want to cater them for the specific things, like what makes the PS4 special, what makes the Wii U special, what makes the PC special. Let's take all of those things and work them in and create a context around the game that makes sense around that, especially for sanity. Events. Okay, I don't know if you've you've played around at all, but I mean. Uh, all the systems kind of have their own Wii U pad at this point because you have the Vita with the PS4 and you have the smart glass is with the Xbox One. Yeah. Have you had a chance to, to try these out and, and does it? Smart glass, no. Okay. Um, others, yes. And they're cool. Okay. Yeah. You just don't want to talk too much about that yet. I don't know what you want me to say about it. <laughs> well, it just, it feels like Nintendo almost painted themselves into a corner with the gamepad, which is a shame because now they have to ship the system, but there's a similar kind of technology everywhere so i'm just curious what you thought is like the biggest strength that the game pad gives that the vita probably may not, may not be able to um I, I i'm always very cautious about um you know saying nintendo's painted themselves in the corner or they've made a lot of huge mistakes because um i've never seen a company surprise so many people oh yeah uh, and you know come out of nowhere to win and i think certainly this 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 console race with the wii u is way way too early to tell and yeah. Um, the people at Nintendo are extremely smart, really great people. Um, we'll see where it goes. I think it's just too early to tell. Um, and, and the answer is honestly, I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to predict the future or even try to in that direction. Okay. Um, did you try to get a, like a, a publisher like Sony or Nintendo to back you in this, in this venture? Or did you always want to do with the crowdsourcing? Um, you know, certainly crowdsourcing is a, a really good way to go for us. And, and, and to, the thing with this industry is when you talk to other people, you really, really can't talk about it. But I think crowdsourcing is the right way to go for this for this game. Um, certainly, if other opportunities come up, we'll always entertain them. But, you know, we're really focused on the crowdsourcing. Right now. Okay. So you um, you did talk about how there's a flawed narrative in this. Mm -hmm. Does that mean there's a flawed narrator? Or are you just talking about, like, the events? You can't necessarily... So is it a flawed narrator? Is that is that the That's way... A good question. Okay, because we've seen flawed narrators recently, and it's m almost always some white dude who is just a jerk. And we kind of excuse him, we excuse Max Payne or Joel as like, oh, he's got a tough past, but really they're just jerks. Like, are you going down the same path as all these other flawed narrators, or are you going to give us something that's like, 
a little different for games going maybe different genders, different races, different problems other than um, what we've seen? We're trying to do something different, and um, to talk about specifically what we do would be a spoiler, but I think, I think you're going to see something refreshingly different with Shadow of the Eternals. And um, we want it to be smart, provocative, thoughtful, um, and have catharsis when you finish the game. So. Okay. Well, I mean, all, all of that sounds great. And, cool. Um, your Kickstarter goes live the 25th of July. Correct. Runs for, was it 30 days, roughly? Probably 30 days, yeah. Looking the for 750000 Yep. Um, it actually looks pretty good right now. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you very much for talking to us. Oh, yeah. Really appreciate it. Thank you.